First of all, thank you just for being here. I realize that it's the last session of the day and most of your minds are elsewhere. And I will try to take that into consideration. Whenever we talk about uh, probably the single best part of our job, firing people. Uh, my name is Jonathan Shirley. I uh, grew up in Louisiana. I didn't go to summer camp at all. Uh, my, my summers were pretty much what you'd expect a Louisiana summer to be, uh, meaning I spent most of my time collecting alligator eggs and uh, working on a farm. So pretty much I de pretty exactly what you would imagine. Uh, my dad does a lot of work with alligators, so I, yeah, I did. I did a lot of that. Um, and it was always one of my things to, you know, to tell him. I, I was always worried that he would get in an accident, an alligator-related accident. Not, I wasn't, obviously I was worried because he's my dad and I love him, but also just you, telling that story, people would be like, well, of course he did. I mean, you're in Louisiana. Like, of course he got an accident you know, related to alligators. But never went to camp growing up until uh, my first year of college. Went up to Camp Laurel up in Maine and worked up there. Was blown away by all of it. Uh, then went to Camp Minnewanka in Michigan for three summers. Um, fell in love with it even more after graduating college. Uh, decided I would try to make it a real job, much to the dismay of my parents. And then kind of finagled my way in and, and it was great. But you know, so there I was, 24, you know, d helping run and being a, a director of camp. And uh, it was, hey, why, you know, you need to go fire that person. And I was, okay, well, here's, a, here's something that they don't tell you anything about in school or anything about, or at no point does someone pull you aside and say, by the way, whenever you uh, have to fire someone, this is how you should, you know, this is a ways to go about it. So that was part of the reason of this session was, was to look at that. I mean, you know, obviously there's motivating counselors and how to help those ones that are struggling maybe get through. Um, but also just whenever it comes time that you have to do it, you have to do that. And I think one of the first things is you have to be willing to fire people. Your camp will not get better if you have underperforming staff members that you are not willing to let go. You know, not only are they bringing your camp down by their actions, but they're bringing down the counselors around them because the superstar counselors look at you and see that someone who's not willing to let someone go. That if, uh, you know, H, what an awesome name. So if H and I are both counselors at a camp and I'm horrible and he's obviously clearly the better counselor and he sees that I'm sticking around, if I can keep my, the job, the same job that he's getting with the effort that I've, I'm putting out, why should he try harder? So you have to be willing to fire people and it's the worst part of the job and it's, you know, it sucks and you don't want to do it because you know, in every single person that you hire, there's a piece of you. In every single person that I hire, I look at, there's something about them that I wanted to invite them into my family that is camp. And so when you're letting that person go, that's a, p a part of you that you're saying goodbye to. It's a part of you that you wanted to work and it didn't work out. And so it is, it's a horrible conversation. It, it, they, I cry during all of them at some point. And even the ones that are horrible, I'm just like, I wish it would have worked out. You know, like after they left and everything, I can do that in my own. But yeah, you just, you, it's such a struggle. Um, so we're going to start out really by looking at um, whenever we're going to talk and have difficult conversations with counselors, uh, there's a concept just to quickly go over called just this emotional bank account. Um, you look at a bank and basically you can't take money out that you didn't put in, you know, in the very fundamentals of banking. You can't take out something that you, you didn't put in. Very similar, whenever you're developing relationships with counselors, because the, the business is all about relationships, you need to make investments and you need to cultivate those relationships. And so how do you do that? You, know, you cultivate through time that you spend with them. You tell them about yourself and you want to learn more about them. You want to, you know, it's that time and attention and love that you put in so that later on, when it comes time to, hey, I really need you to go and help out so-and-so. Hey, I really need you to do this. Or when it comes time, if, if there's, you know, some criticism that needs to happen, if you have a relationship with that person, the chance of them taking that in a positive way is way more, you know, the, the chances are way greater than you know, if you've only had two or three conversations with someone. You know, the chances of them walking away from a critical kind of conversation and you know, doing better and not resenting you and not saying, well, what does he know? He never sees me. Well, no, if we had that relationship, um, you know, it's going to go somewhere. It, you, it also prevents you know, this counselor freakout, uh, which 
to me is, I'm going to use H as an example because he's sitting right here. Um, if we haven't talked, it's two weeks into camp, we haven't talked that often. If I walk up to him and say, hey, I really need to talk to you, what do you think he, do you think he's set up for a positive conversation? You know, if your boss hasn't talked to you in a couple weeks and it's, hey, listen, I really need to talk to you for a second. Yeah. The anxiety level is through the roof at this point. Um, you know, but daily check-ins and those kind of things you know, where you're cultivating and building that relationship, uh, it kind of keeps those anxiety levels you know, at, a, at a more controllable point. Um, and it also models the behavior that you're expecting. You know, this is exactly what you're wanting your counselors to do in the cabin. It's really not that different than a counselor with their campers. You want them to invest in their campers. You want them to love their campers. You want them to do all these things. And the best way to really get them to understand that is to show them what it looks like. And as a director, you have that opportunity. Or as a central staff member, or whatever it is that you, know, that you may be called, you have that opportunity to model the behavior that you're expecting. Um, when we look at kind of understanding underperforming counselors, you know, let's kind of take a, a what is a bad counselor? What are we talking about? You know, I feel like there are times where people say, oh, he's just a bad counselor. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I feel like it's important at this point to go way off topic and just to make sure that, so wh where I'm coming from is we're a residential summer camp. Um, we do three, uh, we do three week sessions and two week sessions, but it does come from more of a residential summer camp. Um, I don't think anything really, I mean, obviously it pertains to the same, um, but either way, just so that if at any point I make a reference to something like that, uh, that, you know, that's what, it's where the camp that I'm with and that's where we're from. Um, so what are, we, what are we talking about? You know, is it a work ethic? Is it an attitude issue? You know, don't, don't just say so-and-so is a bad counselor. Jonathan's a bad counselor. Well, what is it about Jonathan? Well, he's unorganized, kind of lazy sometimes. And these are all true things, but you know, this way we can be a little bit more specific about what we're talking about. Um, I think it's also important to set realistic expectations. You know, your counselors are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. Which means that there are times where they're going to act like they're 18, 19, 20, and 21 years old. I don't act my age. How can I expect them to all the time? Again, it's not that different than campers. If you go into a cabin full of eight-year-olds and go, hey, it's time to go swimming, get your shoes, towel, bathing suit on, meet me outside, don't forget to put sunscreen on. You're lucky if they make it out with clothes on. <laughs> because you can't expect an eight-year-old to deal with ten things right away. Just the same way you can't expect an 18-year-old to always act with the maturity of a 30-year-old. Or, you know, sometimes they're just going to be 18 and that's got to be okay. It's the reason you love them as well. You know, that kind of excitement. But, so, again, I'm not talking about lowering expectations at all. I'm just talking about being realistic and not overreacting whenever they do act their age. You know, it, it's the kind of that patience uh, aspect of it. To me, when you're looking at a counselor and there's this particular thing, you know, something comes up in a cabin, was it, is it a training issue or is this an ability issue? Did this person just not get it during orientation or do they just lack the ability to get it? I mean, let's first of all just be honest with ourselves. The amount of information that we cover during orientation, we should not be expecting even the best counselor to get all of that. We cover way too much and way too little of the time. People don't either get enough time to really grasp the concept or not enough time to practice it. So if our best counselors probably aren't grasping all of it, the ones that are struggling, you know, they're going to have some trouble. So there may be times where you have to go over something again. Uh, and again, <laughs> that's totally fine. Uh, so be able to, being able to retrain um, you know, and reteach skills. You know, a perfect example is you have a counselor who, you know, we kind of, we find out that the counselor, Jonathan, obviously, because he's a bad counselor, is just mean. And that's what you hear from the campers, oh, my counselor's mean. You figure out it's because he, well, he yells at me a lot. You know, so you go and you walk by during maybe a rest time or, you know, during activity, and Jonathan is, you know, sitting all the way over here and, you know, talking, you know, talking to, to H, his camper, but he's doing it from over here. So it's not that he's yelling, he just has to speak loudly to get across the cabin. So that aspect that you teach during orientation about leading up close and going over, 
This is just a, all you have to do, you're just reteaching. You're taking a moment and it's so much easier for them to grasp it because it's actually happening. You know, it's not during orientation, you're talking about hypotheticals. This is actually going on right now. Um, and so kind of teaching in that moment, um, you know, kind of what you're talking about. So that's kind of more of your training. Uh, you know, so you're covering what happened, how can it be handled better, uh, you know, in the future, where are you going to go uh, from here with that? When you're looking at feedback, uh, you want to, you need to be encouraging, of course. Uh, you know, one of my favorite questions during an interview is, you know, tell me how you like to be given feedback. And everyone gives it that same answer. Well, I just like to be direct. I just want people to be honest with you. First of all, those people are lying. No one wants you to be direct. No one says, oh, yeah, just you know, give it to just short. I mean, to, no, they don't. They want you to pad their ego a little bit. And then, of course, talk about what's, you know, the, the issue at hand. Um, but, you, but the big thing is, I think, being direct and being honest. They shouldn't walk away from the conversation feeling like they didn't do anything wrong. Otherwise, then why is their behavior going to change? So, you know, I'm not, again, not talking about hurting people's feelings, but I am talking about making sure your point gets across. Um, yeah, and again, the more work that you did early on, the more getting back to that emotional bank account that you did to cultivate a relationship where that person knows that you care about them, will allow you to have these conversations and have them walk away feeling like, hey, this is something that we are going to move forward on. Um, you know, at, at Champions, there's, it's become more of kind of, it's not a joke, but you know, counselors know that I do love them. Absolutely love them. And unfortunately, they also understand that my term of love doesn't necessarily mean what they think it is. It's not that I'm patting you on the back all the time telling you how good you are. It's I love you too much to let you put weak effort into what you're doing. I love you too much to not be your best. And so whenever, I, you know, whenever I'm talking to you, it's not that I'm getting on you. It's because I know that you have an ability that is far greater than what you're showing right now. And, you know, and that's the kind of relationship that allows them to walk away from a situation feeling like, yeah, that sucked that we had that talk, but I know why it happened, and I want to move forward from there. Um, Do you document that meeting? I don't. I guess it depends on what level it is, sorry. Um, if this is just kind of what, where it was a retraining, I'll probably write, keep, you know, keep it some kind of track of that. Like we went over it, because again, like if later on it's still coming up, you know, clearly we have to have a separate conversation. Um, but I think if it's just the way someone's maybe teaching an activity or if it's a minor thing, um, yeah, I usually won't. But I think if it, usually if it's a retraining, you know, it's making a, a note, you know, in their application or on their, um, you know, in their counselor folder or whatever it is that you have, uh, and their evaluations. Um, yes? You can never document too much. Yeah, <laughs> sure. That's definitely a point. I mean, you can never over-document, uh, so you do want to make sure that you, know, you are having those things written down so that if you do have to go back to them, you have that available. Um, let's see, the other part is you do want to uh, lead the conversation with a working plan of how you're going to go, where you're going to go from here. You do want to be, and you, you want to include that in your feedback. It's where are we going to go, not what do you need to do to get better. It's what are we going to do to move forward. Um, otherwise, there is, in the back of their mind, you become known as you know, the problem person. Every time you show up, there's a problem. Okay, you, you clearly don't want to be known just as that. You want to be known, you know, this is, you're there for a solution as well. You know, you're trying to help them get the most um, you know, out of their experience. You're not just saying, hey, you need to do this better and then walking away. Um, you're d needing to, to be a part of it. Sometimes you don't have to have a sit down, full sit down kind of conversation. If it is a little thing, like maybe the way they're doing an activity, um, we use this feedback form. And so, and if you want this, just let me know and I'll just email it to you and you can just change the name or you can leave the name, I don't care. Um, you know, so you could, you know, we just circle who's it from, who's it going to, what you saw, what you liked, where you want to improve, some sort of little go from there. If you, and so they're great, they're really easy to do. You know, it's gotten to the point that I try to do you know, three or four a day. Um, because it is nice and easy, and it lets people know that, that you care, that you're, you're paying attention, um, and it does keep you from having to have a whole bunch of conversations and pull people from activities or you know, away from their kids or something like that. So if you, uh, if you want this, I'll give my email address will be later, and you can just let me know, you know along with anything else, obviously. Um, 
All right, so if it's more of an ability, you are now looking at, okay, can I, this person clearly, you know, this wasn't just a they weren't paying attention. This is a, they may, you know, there's a bigger issue here. And the, the question now is, do you have the time to help them through this? Do you have the energy to help them through this? And can you do that without negatively affecting other counselors in camp? Uh, and that's, you know, that's sometimes where we start to get towards, is it time to let someone go? Because if you can't, you know, if, yeah, I can help Cody get through whatever's going on, but it means that I'm going to be able to only spend maybe five minutes with 25 other people, then maybe there's a bigger issue that, and, you know, that person might need to leave camp. Um, you know, because so many people will be, you know, hurt by the fact that you're spending all your time with one counselor. Um, so that's, you know, can you teach them in a timely fashion? Is it worth the effort? Um, how's it going to affect other campers and counselors? Sorry, if someone wanted to write more of that. Um, you know, you are, you want to be, you know, kind of keeping track of the issues that are maybe reoccurring. Uh, a quick example of something like that is we started noticing, especially with our, so we have a high school program, they go through the high school program, they can become counselors. N those first year counselors who came through the program, just a lack of initiative, a lot of kind of standing around. There was, you know, we would be doing work projects and they were kind of just, they would, wanted to help. And if you asked them, oh, of course, yeah, jump right in. But you always had to ask. And so we tried, and eventually what we figured out is, it was our own fault because we were training them to do that because during the high school work program, you know, the, the high school program and they had work projects, it was always, you know, go to the filling station and so-and-so will tell you what to do. Go here and wait and so-and-so will tell you what to do. Go here. You know, we, were, we were training them to stand and wait. Yeah, and, and we got really good at it. Unfortunately, that was a problem. You know, we, that we, that they were so good at standing and waiting that they weren't doing it not taking any initiative. And so that was more, you know, that re uh, reflected on, you know, something that we had to change, um, you know, in our program. And a lot of times you'll see that if you do have this, the same or similar problems coming up over and over again, you know, it's an opportunity to look at maybe how you do your, how you cover that information during orientation, uh, or maybe how you're, you know, maybe training, you know, training the, for the wrong, uh, the wrong actions of what you're looking for. Um, You d one of the great things that comes from that feedback form earlier is you are avoiding you know, a blind side where all of a sudden, you, in general you want to avoid this. Um, at no point should I feel like all of a sudden I'm fired. You know, like there was no build up. There was no, but you didn't tell me anything as far as I was getting worse or I was, uh, and again, I, and now we're talking about counselors who are being let go because it's the right thing to do and not they broke a major rule. You know, clearly, if they broke a major rule, who cares if they're blindsided, they need to leave. But you know, this is, you want to avoid the, you, we went from zero to fired. And we, I don't know how that happened. Um, keep a track of, uh, of issues that reoccur. On the first day of, ori of our orientation, we have a, a watch list for counselors that we're not sure of. Um, and go ahead and do that early. I mean, put together a list of, you know, from day one, because you know, all of us know, you, first day of orientation goes and you saw that one person maybe standing on the side really reluctant to get involved. Maybe they're super shy, but it's people we're going to have to put a little bit more effort into. Maybe it's this, maybe it, But keep a, keep a track of that list from day one. And then touch base with those people throughout orientation. You know, give them specifics of, hey, I need you to work on, this is what I'm seeing, this is what I need you to work on. So we had a counselor two summers ago who kind of definitely fit into this category. From day one, it was not really involved with other people, didn't really seem to get on board, really reluctant to take a lead in anything, and you know, pulled him aside and said, you know, Jonathan, this is what we're seeing. Um, you know, one of the things that we would like to see is for you to take charge in one of the activity training sessions that we have. You know, can you run one of the activity training sessions because you're sports department head has said that you're always the last one to volunteer to you know, run a skill or something. And so, and he did. And so that, you know, he met that criteria. Now we still fired him later, but that's an example of, you know, 
of giving someone, you know, give them something specific to work on and give them a timeline to do it. So it was, you know what, it was Jonathan that we would like for you to take the lead and we'd like for you to do it in the next couple of days. You know, the, there's two more activity training sessions left. You know, take advantage of that. Um, so, try, you know, trying to keep, keeping track of, I mean, during orientation, getting in, t obviously touching base with them w during orientation. Again, it's also part of the avoiding kind of the blind side of, you never told me that I was struggling. Um, now we're into the, we're going to let someone go. We're going to fire someone. It's time to do it. Um, before, you, before camp, uh, this, for your major infractions, your alcohol, drugs, weapons, abusing a camper, abusing another counselor, you know, the, kind of this side, the, you know, you're gone right away. This isn't a, oh, maybe we can work on it issue. Whatever your, you know, and it's whatever your policy is, gather your information, follow your policy, get the person out. Um, kind of, I guess the quick version, this side is kind of for me where it's tougher because, you know, this isn't kind of a clear cut. You know, to, that is, you know, clear cut, you're out. And just, I guess, from that standpoint, um, Jonathan counselor came back, you know, people said that he had, you know, he, that he was drunk when he got back to camp. You, you, you gather your facts, you talk to him, and this happens quickly. These are the kind of firings that you're not waiting around. The conversation is very simple. Um, the conversation simply is, you know, this is what happened. You know, you know that this is against our policy and we have to let you go. And we're going to do so now. Um, there, then the obvious you know, reply is, can I say goodbye to my kids? Say, can I say goodbye to my co-counselors? No good has ever come from that. So it's best that you just don't. Um, have a, you know, I typically have their, you know, I'll do the firing always with someone else. Have another director in the room so that if there's ever a, but so-and-so said this, no. So-and-so did not say that. My so-and-so was there. He or she knows. Um, so having someone there, uh, I would also just strongly recommend, I think we'll kind of get to some of the other, but practice, you know, go through it ahead of time. You know, I, would, I usually sit down with whoever's going to be in the room with me and say, this is what I plan on saying. And the other person's job is to try to come up with excuses or reasons why the counselor thinks they shouldn't be fired. So you get all of the reasons. So I have... My argument is set. You know, if they say this, I'm ready for this. If they say that, go through it ahead of time. It's going to save a lot of trouble later on once you're in the room. Um, oh. um, <laughs> that's just touching. It's okay, no. <laughs> Who cares? Just send him to my camp. Um, it's a future camper. I mean, You've got to be polite. <laughs> Building those relationships now. That baby's going to remember me. Whenever I fire them, um, <laughs> at least they'll know what you know, they'll know what's coming. Just building on that, one of the things that we started doing a few years ago is, is actually practice, practicing that in front of the entire staff during staff training. Oh wow, yeah, like. yeah, that's great because then they know exactly what's you know, right. they know so what's. We also yeah. tell them, and we do this in a very loving, supportive way. Of course. That if we decide they're going to have to leave camp, the time between when we tell them and when they're out of camp will probably be 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean. It, that's great. I mean, and there's really no reason why you can't just say that. Um, Question. Yes. How do you have that happen? Get all their stuff like out. I usually. S sure. Um, kind of depends on obviously when you're f you know when it goes down. You know, like if you're firing that night, it's d certainly more difficult. But I'll send a member of our leadership team with them. You know, maybe the age division leader or something like that. They'll go with them to the cabin. Um, you know, if it's during the day, you know, it's easy to you know during a meal or something just you know pack their stuff. You know, while the kids are gone, and then you know we'll, we'll later on we'll then say how do you what do you tell the kids? But um, yeah, I mean pack pack them up and. And get them out. Um, so, well, go ahead. Wanna, of course. Because Leanne, we had to fire a, a, a staff member this past summer, and it was like in the late afternoon. 
Um, and so she lived like an hour away. And um, one of the other things that we, we weren't anticipating was that like she didn't go home because she was over 18 and had been fired from her summer job. And she ended up getting in a wreck oh, really, really late at night that night. We didn't know. And her parents didn't know. So her father calls our camp director and is like, why did you fire my daughter and where is my daughter? And we're like, we don't know. And it was a big, big issue. Does anybody have anything about like what they do for people that are over 18 after? Do you guys let their parents know? Oh. Okay. We don't, I just, I mean, just, really <laughs> you don't, you do, I mean. That was a really terrible experience. And we had, yeah. that's how we explained it to the parents um, of, the, of this girl and she's fine now, but um, it was a really like weird situation of like, we, you know, we're letting you go in the early afternoon you know, it's out of our hands, but how can we be more responsible as camp professionals to help them out the one, one of the things yeah. that we do, is where I am, I'm in a very remote location, mm -hmm. 30 miles north of the U.S., so um, we, we, a lot of times we, you know, last summer we, we fired a girl because she brought alcohol on the property. It was during staff training, so it was a little bit easier, mm -hmm. but, you know, we encourage her, hey, just call your parents. And a lot of times, as a camp, you know, being our look, we'll put them up in a hotel for the night. And again, we, we're pushing, call your parents, call your parents, especially with the age group. A few summers ago, we fired a couple of members, and they decided not to. They decided to be bums in Key West for three months. And, you know, they were living out of trash bags, and it was very interesting. Can't you know, blame him. The dad calls, he's like, why did you let my son do this? I was like, well, you need to talk to his girlfriend, because she's the one that convinced him to do that. <laughs> so... We're definitely encouraging to the state. We're tipping our they they call your parents. Yeah. You know, we, we try to find but out don't what, their, what is their yeah. plan yeah. of action, what they're going to do. Are you going to work? Where are you going to stay tonight? You know, how are you going to get home? We want to, you know, just as a camper, they're coming in, we want to know how, when, what, where. We're going to do the exact same thing. You know, yes, we let you go. You made a mistake. We all understand that. But how can we help you get home or get to a, a point where you need to be? Because yeah, you still love them. I mean, yeah. you still, yeah. We're in youth development. We're all in youth development. Yeah. Just because they're staff over 18 doesn't mean we're done developing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, you know, they can learn just as much from being fired as they can from a successful summer. And follow up you know? Is, yeah. It's important yeah. to cover them because you do love them. Yeah, because you do. I mean, yeah, especially, you know, they could be former campers. I mean, who knows who you're firing here? So there is the, you know. There's a like, yeah, Exactly. There may be other issues at play, you know? But. Um, but a couple of things kind of just all on that, you know, definitely you know, taking in the psyche of the person. I mean, we've fired people and then let them spend the night in our nurse's station to kind of calm down because we didn't want them getting on the road. You know, when, you know, telling the, if they are, depending on, you know, if it's a former camper and they're obviously distraught, telling them, call me when you get home. Call me when you're going wherever you're going so that I know, you know, so we know that that you're okay, that everything is fine. Again, you don't have a job here this summer, but it doesn't mean that we're casting you off to the winds. You know, whether you've spent one day or 10 years at our camp, you know, we love you in some way. Um, you know, we want to make sure that, th that there's something there. Um, we'll kind of get into other pieces because I, I do agree. Something that you, H said was, you know, it doesn't even get into some of the stuff with the parents. You know, we don't either. I mean, because great thing, you will hear from the parents. <laughs> they're going to call and they're going to want to know why you fired them. And the beautiful thing is, I'm not allowed by law to tell you why I fired them. And the better thing is, I fired your son. You know who knows? Your son. So you should ask them. Um, yeah, and that's if we even get that far in the conversation. You know, because at this point, you have other responsibilities. You know, talking to someone's parents who you fired is not. And, and I, I don't think there's nothing wrong with letting them know that. I mean, that, that you have other responsibilities. You have kids here and other counselors. And encourage them to, to ask, ask their son or daughter. I actually suspended a girl last, this last summer for not showing up to work when she was supposed to. And uh, her mom called me like, immediately and started screaming at me about what a horrible person I was and what a bad director I was. And... You know, her daughter needed that money, and how she was going to get me fired. And I said, "I'm sorry, you can try, but I'm not allowed to discuss this with you." Mm -hmm. And I hung up. 
Yeah, and there's again there's another especially because by law, you know, that's all you did. You, the, you know, they no longer work here, and that's all you can get into. Um, but so whenever you're looking at firing in general, whether it's kind of the more straight firing and then more, something more the gray area, come up with this criteria before camp starts. Sit down with your owners, whoever it is, sit down and as, you know, as a core group of people come up with why you're, you know, criteria that you're firing someone. Because as soon as you assign a name to it, it gets personal and it's so much more, hard, so much more difficult to decide if you're going to fire Jonathan because you're not, you're, you're not firing a person, you're, you're firing what they did. That's why they're fired. They're not fired because of who they are. You know, they're fired because of what happened. And so come up with this before a name gets assigned to it, before it gets personal. Because it just get, it's that much more difficult. Because you know, the amount of time that you put into getting to know them, to developing that relationship, your know, feelings can become attached. If I were getting fired and someone's like, well, you just don't fit in, I'm like, oh, yeah? So yeah. Then, you know, I just, like, I don't know how would you... Well, the, this, you know, this may not exactly be like what I'm going to tell them. Sorry, you just don't fit in. But, <laughs> but it, it is to us. I mean, there are counselors who just, they, maybe they struggle. Maybe they're great with, they're good with their kids, but they have a, a hard time connecting with other staff members. And therefore, maybe you have, there, there are counselors who no other counselor wants to have as a co-counselor. And that's an issue. And at the end of the day, you know, your, the job is to, to put the best, you know, for us it's you know, roughly 70, 75 people. Like, that's our job. The best 70 guys are the ones who need to be hired. And, and so it is kind of the, the not fitting in is different for, who, for different camps. But you know, if, they, if they're struggling to get along with their coworkers, that's still just as much of an issue. Um, yeah, as as not being able to to get on with all of their. I mean, what if they are working great with the kids? Mm -hmm. Does that matter more than whether or not they're getting along with the coworkers? Because the main reason that the camp is there is just for the kids, just for them. As long as they're not negatively affecting right. other people as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if, if there's a situation where you can make it work, then that's good. But make sure it's not negatively affecting everyone else because that because this is where you do kind of get into that gray area of how great do they have to be with the kids to overcompensate for how negatively they're affecting other people that they're working with so it is, it is a balancing act and that's where you're coming up with something ahead of time is crucial and it's still difficult I mean we should have fired someone last year and didn't and there isn't a day that goes by that I don't regret not firing that person um, and now they want to come back? Uh, they, for, they, they don't want to come back. Um, or at least they haven't told me. And, and obviously, oddly enough, enough time has passed that now I'm kind of, well, maybe we can work with him. But like the other side of me is like, shut up. No, you should have fired him last year. We don't, don't talk yourself into taking someone who you shouldn't have taken earlier. You know, that's, it's the downside of, of the, the industry where you love everyone. Um, <laughs> So, and this was, in the end, this was the, this was the question and why we didn't fire that person. Uh -huh. yeah. He was gold, meaning he was a lifeguard. And you need to have enough lifeguards. You know, so that is you know, your first, you know, do you have enough staff? Can you run a safe camp after firing Jonathan? You know, can you still run a safe camp? Do you have enough people? Um, and that is you know, definitely kind of one of the bigger questions to, to, uh, to figure out. Um, because if you do, then what do you do with it? Um, you want to gather as many actual facts as possible. You're talking to, and for me, that you, this usually means talking to more of our leadership team. You know, who is his or hers, um, their age division leader? Who is their activity department head? You know, not what are their co-counselor, what are their counselors saying about him or her? You know, this is, you know, kind of your core people, you know, what are they, uh, what are they saying? And, and those are the facts that you're going to be using. Um, what we talked about, rehearse what you plan to say. And then as many different, you know, possible responses to what's going on. Um, the firing. Having someone else present. Definitely is a, uh, crucial to make sure that uh, there is no issues later. 
stick to what you know, th those facts, you know, try to stay, you know, no matter what happens, this, these are the things that you know. You know that they are struggling teaching their activities. You know that they're not playing a role in their cabin. You know that their co-counselor is taking the lead all the time. Um, standing by your decision. In the end, you decided to fire this person. During the firing, and emo when emotions start going, don't back up and say, well, I guess so. You know, this is the decision that you made, and this was a decision that you put time and effort and you know, wanted to do. So don't forget that that was the goal. You know, if you, if you decided that you're going to fire Jonathan, leaving the room, if there's anything else other than Jonathan's fired, there's a problem. Because we decided we're firing Jonathan. You know, so if we leave and Jonathan still has a job, something happened. You know? Um, I, a lot of it is, is, I guess this is the next thing, avoid talking in circles. You know, it's, you're not, you know, the, but my kids love me, but I'm doing so well. You're not, otherwise we wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, and I feel like there's one thing is, is not being able to, uh, you know, I, just, I, don't, I just don't know what I did wrong. It's another, you know, kind of common thing to hear. Um, and a lot of times what will, the, our end result is the sentence, this is our decision and that's not going to change. This is what we as a camp have decided to do and, and we're not going to change. And there was, a couple summers ago we fired, there were two distinct firings. One of them, um, and it, it was very strange because the one that we kind of had more of the facts on that I thought was going to be a relatively easy, to, you know, quick kind of conversation took a long time because emotions got real high. And the one that we were really letting go because it was just lazy and just kind of didn't, wasn't one of the better counselors. You know, that was it. Yeah, and had, the conversation could have gone on longer, but in the end, that's what the, the second one was like 10 minutes. Because you know, at the end, the guy was like, well, are you going to change your mind? Is there anything I can say? No, there's not. All right. You know, and which pretty much was his attitude the entire time during camp. So I shouldn't have been that shocked. I mean, like, he's lazy during camp. He's going to be lazy in this argument. You know, it's like, ah, okay, well, it doesn't matter. Um, so avoid, avoid the, the, the round and round. Um, and then let them know what's happening next. I mean, because, again, you do love these people. You do want them to, okay, this is where we're going to go from here. So-and-so is going to go back with you to your cabin, help you pack your stuff. You're not going to be able to say goodbye to your kids. You know, we will take care of telling them what, ha what happened. Uh, you know, where do you plan on going? Um, you know, what time is, you know, what time is it? Things like that. Um, you know, so, so they have an idea of the next step. Um, so what's next for you? Yeah, you're having them pack with someone, getting them off property. Again, I mean, unless, if it is nighttime, a lot of times we may let them sleep, you know, in our nurse's station or something. Um, but they won't be sleeping in the cabin. You know, they won't have an opportunity to, to talk to other counselors or anything like that. Um, no, you know, there is no last goodbye. Um, you're now, <laughs> responsibility shifts, and now it's taking care of these campers. You know, you should already know who's going to go, who's taking that person's place in the cabin. You know, are, how are you reshuffling? Um, what is going to be said to them, you know, providing extra love and attention for them? Um, so what is going to be said? This varies. You know, for us, it, when they're young, it's Jonathan had to go home to take care of some stuff before school started. Jonathan had to go home and take care of some stuff. As they get older, because at eight, nine, yes, maybe they, you know, chances are they may not have really attached to that person anyway. There's a reason you're firing them. And so they will be very excited for the next person who's coming in to play with them. Because that's pretty much all they're excited about anyway. And even their best counselors, they don't always remember their names. You know, <laughs> because it's, they're seven. You know, that's going to happen. Um, so who's going in there? You know, that, as they get older, you know, especially you know, if it's a high school, uh, one of our high school cabins, you know, their counselor that we're letting go, you know, we're obviously not going into details. But it's, you know, there are standards that we have at Camp Champions. And that person you know, went against, that, against what we're, what, you know, one of our rules, one of our guidelines. Um, we've never fired someone under 18, and so I don't, I don't think we would. Um, has anyone had that? We've done it where we have them call their parents and then we have them call their parents. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good idea.
Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, having them make the conference. I guess, yeah, we've kind of done that with not so much <laughs> under 18 counselors, but, you know, that 22 year old counselor who no longer has a car because he was drunk driving and his car's impounded, so he doesn't have a way home. He needs to call someone. Um, Cody, did you have. Basically, same thing. We, yeah. we sit in there and let the parents with the kids to make sure the information going to the parent is accurate. Yeah. Um, like You're putting them on a conference call? But they came in the Sorry, first on a speakerphone. The first day that they were there, they decided they needed to go smoke ganja in the, in the woods. Makes we were, sense, though. That we, were, we were like, come in the office. <laughs> They've been there less, on probably less than 24 hours. And they were kids that we had had at camp for like eight or nine years in a row. And, yeah. and so it was like, uh, sit in my office, I hit intercom, I dial the number, and I sit there and they go, and the parents are, is Cody there? Yeah, I'm right here. And they're like, we thought so. Can you tell that idiot we're going to be there? You know, and I was like, yeah. they're still here. You don't have to call them that name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do it. What you do from the intercom yeah. so that we know exactly what is being said yeah. here and what's being said back. Yeah, if you, if you are going to have you know, controlling the conversation with you know, speakerphone and things like that, so you do have total, you know what's being asked, you know what, more importantly, you know what the answers are. Um, call the, we call the campers' parents, obviously, I mean, you should call the campers' parents, let them know that Jonathan got fired. Again, we're not going into why, it's, you know, broke the rules of, of camp, you know, it didn't live up to the standards that we set as a counselor. So, and then have, tell them what is going to happen as well. You know, tell the parents, all right, Jonathan's being fired, so-and-so is going into that cabin, and any background you can give on that counselor. You know, maybe he's a returning counselor, he's a member of our leadership staff who is gonna go and spend the last week with the kids. The kids already know him, they're excited, they love him. You know, let the parents know, okay, this is what the plan is. Um, the major all, the, all of those kind of phone calls I've ever had, the parents are totally fine. You know, they understand that they can't understand, know why as long as they know that someone else is going into that cabin who's going to take care of their kids, they're on board. I mean, I have to lean towards firing this, this person because in the end, that's the mission of your camp and, and the donor, the family, obviously the conversation with them is a delicate one, but it, it has to happen. And again, just because you're firing someone doesn't mean you don't love them anymore and doesn't mean that they can't grow from this. And it doesn't mean that you're not willing to talk to them about working next summer. You know, all of the counselors who have left, who that we've fired, we encourage you that if you want to apply again next summer. Does it mean you're going to be fired? I don't know. It means that your interview is going to be more difficult than it would have been. Really you know, opposite. but... Our policy is if we fire you, you can't reapply. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. And which is, I mean, yeah. You walk out. I like it. <laughs> yes? I just have a quick question. Um, <clears throat> what if the parent requested to be in that conference room uh, you fire the counselor and under the age of 18, do you have anything against? Like if the parents want to know why mm -hmm. you fire, hear from your point of view, and try to figure out how to help the kid grow, like is that? I think that's, it's a, I think it's a good conversation to have after camp is over. Okay. I think for them to find out, as far as helping their kid grow from there, um, because they can ask their kid why they got fired. But again, like as far as, you know, is there, are there things that I can do to help him or her deal with this or learn from this? It's a conversation you have at the end of the summer because again, you have other things to do you know, right then and there and that's take care of the rest of the kids. But I mean, it's great whenever the parents you know, want to help them learn from it. Um, get out. So firing people sucks. Firing people is emotionally draining. Firing people makes you exhausted, you want to go take a nap, you, it's, I would rather run around with kids for three hours than fire someone for five minutes. It's just like talking to a homesick kid, how it just drains the life out of you because you just get so emotionally 
you know, enveloped in what's going on. So once you've kind of taken care of these responsibilities, go have fun. Go do something to remind yourself that this job is awesome and that water slides are cool and that it's fun to get dirty or something just to recharge your battery because it's so easy to get bogged down in the mundane minutia that goes on with some with drama at camp. You need to rem remember that you love this job and that it's not all about you know it's not depression every day. You know I mean just the same way that you know two percent of the campers are homesick but it feels like it can feel like every kid is homesick if you're not enjoying everyone else so get out and just enjoy your job and just remember that that you love it um, you fired them expect accepting okay that's fine then. Um, accept the fact that there will be some us versus them mentality going on amongst your counselors um, it's natural. They go, it's probably a sign that you do an awesome job creating a community during orientation. You know, it's okay for them to, I can't believe you fired Jonathan. I can't believe you did this. He's such a great guy. A lot of times, if, if you feel like you can ask the question, you know, I would also sometimes just say, would you have wanted to be co-counselors with him? Well, no, but someone else could have been co-counselors with him. Not me or these friends of mine that we all feel the same way. You know, yeah. I have to say, almost every time that someone has gotten fired at camp, the counselors have come to the director afterwards and said, we didn't really want to say anything, but thank you so much. Our yeah, you, like, you will. They will thank you later. I mean, often immediately we have some of the, and obviously it depends on the situation, but you know, but the immediate, don't be shocked if there is the us versus them, but they do get it later. They do realize at no point has anyone, you know, at the end of camp, have I looked back going, you know what I wish? I wish we would have kept that guy around because he was awesome. <laughs> yeah, at no point do you regret firing someone. If you've done it and you put all the effort and all the, you know, you've researched why you're doing it, you're not going to regret it. You'll feel bad because it sucks to do, but it was the right thing to do for camp, and other counselors will, you know, will realize that as well. Um, you know, utilize, lean on your leadership team. Make sure that they, make sure that your leadership team knows the story, so that one story is getting out amongst other counselors. If you can, go ahead and just do it. Your, you know, do all, if you can pull all the counselors together and at one point say this is what happened. Uh, you don't have to go into extreme detail, but. We, this counselor is no longer here. This is the decision that we made. Again, most of the time, if there's an uproar, it goes by quickly because it's camp and five minutes later, something else will happen that they will care about more than that. Um, it is, you know, their parents are going to call. Um, you know, know what you can t tell them, know what, you know, by law. You know, in Texas, we, we can't say why. That why they're fired, it's just they're no longer working here. <laughs> Talk to your son or daughter. Um, what's great about firing is that it can you know, keep your all-star counselors, ex you know, not excited obviously, because you're firing people. You want people like, walking on eggshells around you, but I mean, you, don't get me wrong, you want a little bit of fear? You want a little bit. You, know, you do want a little bit of fear, but um, you know, you're not trying to raise anxiety levels. Um, but you know, by letting, subpar struggling counselors go, you're saying that, listen, we expect a high level of performance. And so the people that are performing at a high level see that. Um, but some things that they can do, you know, your star counselors, get them to help with some of the struggling staff members, especially during orientation. You know, Justin seems to be struggling. It would be awesome if you, and go, if you would go and just kind of help him out. You know, you're both a sports counselor. You know, help him maybe lead that activity that he's going to take charge of. You know, help him, you know, keep an eye on him during this. Whenever you guys go out to dinner next time, invite him so that he can go along and start making those connections. Um, you know, they want, you know, stop, your top staff want to feel included in that operation, um, and they'll love you for it. Evaluate and follow up with all of your staff. It's really tempting to not evaluate and follow up with the staff that are doing great. Because they're doing great, why do you need to talk to them? That's the problem. Um, 
a couple summers ago on an evaluation, you know, I received a, uh, you know, those anonymous evaluations, but you know what the handwriting is, so you know who wrote it, so you go and talk to him about it afterwards. <laughs> you know, I was like, Michael, I know it was you. Um, you know, it was, you know, Shirley plays favorites. And I was like, where'd this come from? You know, and we talked and it was like, well, you're always talking to these other counselors and you're never, I feel like you never check in with me. And, and I start to say, it's because you're doing great. And you know, in the middle of it, it's, but I forget to tell you that. You know, and so make sure that you are checking in with everyone so people don't, don't feel like you, you're, you're playing favorites because you're spending more of your time with the counselors that are struggling. Um, you know, so making sure that you're evaluating, um, you know, letting go of your underperforming staff members you know, is a way to kind of keep, um, you know, keep people going. You're standing by the standards that you set. You know, you, this, this is the high level that we want from our staff members. This is what we're going to get. Um, at this point, any kind of questions over the stuff that we covered? I mean, just. I have a question. I'm a day camp director. And this okay. Is going to be a day camp with my question, but I'm just curious about it because I'm in. This council is fired for cause. And we, all of our counselors live in kind of a close to a geographic area, and you probably know what's coming next. They all still go out and party together. And so I have a counselor who's kind of now a bad seed hanging out with all of my counselors who are still working for me. And obviously I can't control that, but I'm just wondering if anybody has any ideas or suggestions on how to deal with that. Has anyone had something similar before? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you had this conversation with the ones who still work for Yes. Yeah. But they still go out and argue. Okay, but you, you at least expressed your concern to them that, you know, what the bad seed and the ones. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, well, and again, like, you're not saying this is a bad person. It's just. This is someone who you know, isn't living up to the standards that we have at camp and can't be here. You worry about this is someone who is poisoning. He's, you know, they're, they're intentionally yeah. talking bad about camp or things like that. Um, it, it happens with Facebook and other things as yeah. well, yeah. with overnight camps. And they're, they're all in touch with each other yeah. immediately after. Yeah. So yeah. You can do stuff. You yeah. Talking to one another. And it's just uh, keeping the others encouraged. Yeah. And Letting them know when they are doing a good job and keep, keep the high standards. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah. Eventually. And, yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. It will, it's sort of a struggle at times. And again, it, if that person wants to try to bring the ship down, they're going to be trying, you know, they'll make that effort. And, and again, I think that if you're continuing to have those conversations with your, with your counselors who obviously are still at camp about the high standards that you set and the fact that this person didn't live up to them, you know, they'll get tired of that person just continuing to rag on camp. Or, and if they don't, then they need to be let go also. Sure. I mean, you'll definitely get to that point. Yeah. You may have to be, give them an alternative. You know, you guys either need to get past this, or if you can't get past this, mm -hmm. then you need to go. Yeah. That, that's what we actually did last year. We let two people go, and they continued hanging out with um, all the staff, and just started creating more havoc. And we ended up loving another five people go. And in, in order for me to do that, I was, um, I needed more staff. So I reached out to the other camps around me and asked if they had any extra staff people. And luckily they did. And so those people replaced those people. But it was, a, it was a, probably a three week process that we had to go through. Um, last summer we, because you will end up with some situations where you, can't fire people because you can't run a safe program. Or, and here, so our situation was between terms, counselors drank, we have a no drinking policy at camp, between terms some, you know, some counselors drank, you know, the one of the first days of the next term, you know, we hear about it, we start checking in with other people who we knew were either at the party or kind of were with them, and it was, you know, I, you know, I want to know, did you drink you know, between terms? Yes, I did. All right, thank you. We'll get back to you with what we're going to do. And after asking the first five people that we asked all said yes, we realized this could get bad. Um, the number ended up at 22. Um, clearly, too many that we can fire. Uh, we did fire two of them for lying. The first time we asked, they said they did not drink, and then they came up an hour and a half or so later as they realized that we're asking everyone and that eventually we we're going to learn. 
you know, and we did let them go because that was different. You know, I mean, that, that wasn't just, you know, drinking you then lied when given an opportunity, you know, to come forward. Um, and so we ended up, we gathered everyone into the, uh, into the owner's house, you know, talked about the disappoint, you know, obviously the, just the level of disappointment, the, the struggle that we had because we cannot fire you. And specifically saying, I wish I could fire you. You know, I, and essentially went, just went about trying, for lack of a better words, making, trying to make them feel as bad as possible without getting them to then go out and be horrible counselors. Um, because that obviously is the, the tightrope you walk of, I want you to get the point, but I don't want it to then negative, you know, negatively affect your job outside. And, um, you know, we did, amongst other things, you know, we had them, you know, write why the honor policy is important. And we kind of started to change some of our other things because it, it really was, um, we realized that we, there are things that we could do as a, as a camp, as a culture, that could have made things easier. Um, but it was, uh, it sucked. It was a horrible situation. I mean, because these are people we, we should have fired, should have fired them, and couldn't because of the number of people that broke, you know, something that you know, is such a large part of kind of what we believe in and what we stand for. Um, how would you handle it differently if those people that you talked about smoked marijuana? Like, would you cancel camp because of that? I mean, it's different from alcohol. It is, yeah. Um, would you cancel? Yeah, I feel like if it's drugs, they would be fired. And we would have found a way to make it work. Did you have underage kids in the drinking? Yes. What's the difference between that and marijuana? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Um, hey, Jonathan. Yes. There is a camp uh, near us that, that fired uh, out of a staff of 60 something, fired 17 people. Wow. And because they didn't want a culture of too big to fail, does that for me? Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, again, like, you can play with the schedule, and, you know, there are ways to go about it. And, um, you know, in hindsight, and if it comes again, who knows? I mean, I could see us potentially doing the same thing. This was a few years ago, before I got to our camp, we had our entire equestrian staff had like, like, they were so unhappy with the way that they were doing it. And they Sure. And we ended up, I mean, if we took a dive and we've been working on coming back for the past couple of years for it, but at the same time, a lot of parents were like, yeah, you know, I appreciate that. And we got another session and that kind of thing, but it was, it was yeah. one of those that had to do it. Yeah. Because in the long run, you, you do have to, and again, like, it makes, does make me look at should we have let those people go? And that'll be something that we'll continue to, to look we, into. We always anyway. look at it and say, what's in the best interest of the kids? Sure. Part of what's in the best interest of the kids is having the, the right and the proper staff. We don't have the right and proper staff. We can't have them. If we can't have them, we can't have the kids. We talk about putting kids into other sessions. I think that's fantastic. We're helping find another camp for them to go to. You know, if if you're up against it that much, we can't jeopardize the integrity of the American Camp Association, of of, hmm. of our integrity as peers and relations within this industry. We we need to take a stand against those things. And you say they didn't they didn't lie to you, but they actually did because you had a policy at the beginning of the summer. Yeah. And then they broke that policy, so they lied. It's just the other kids lied twice. Yeah. So it's, it's how much are you willing to yeah. forgive and give sure. up to? Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, one thing that I do uh, with each like department, like cooking, program, all that, especially programming, is um, I make sure all of my program staff are trained in everything. Are trained as lifeguards. Are trained in the horses are trained an archery and groups course, so that way if I have to let somebody go, it's not gonna affect any of those program areas. Mm -hmm. And overstaff. Yeah, right. and overstaff, yeah. you know. That's the hardest one. Yeah. With, the, with budgetary situations yeah. and money yeah. and everything, overstaff, that's, we would all want for that. But, sure. You know, even if it's just like one or two, yeah. um, maybe consider um, alternate, uh, uh, 
I have backup applications. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. On yeah. hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people who are kind of ready to go just in case. Well, we've had, uh, we've used two different methods, one of which is we have a CIT program, which is the first half of the summer, and then one the second half. And so we've had our graduates from our first half come in and fill in. And it's, you know, they actually see it as an honor because they've been called, selected out of their group. Um, of course, you know, they have to have uh, mentors around them. They can't just be alone with the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, so that makes it a little bit tricky, but it's work. It's a very hard situation to put them in as well because suddenly you're expected to do everything a counselor does, and uh, it's very different from the program they just finished. I mean, at, at some level, we can be trying again, show them everything and expose them to it so they, they know what they're getting into the next year, but it's still a bit of a, an eye-opener. The other thing is um, when we've had to let go, you know, a, a chunk of people before, we, you know, they would laugh at us. Oh, they can't fire us. There's too many of us. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. Because we picked up the phone and we have alumni that they couldn't come for the whole summer. Exactly. That was the problem, but they could have come for five weeks and so guess what? They get the phone call and then they come in and it's worked really well. Really? So I think that's yeah. important from the beginning of the summer to have that list and all those contact names ready to go so you can call them in at any minute to help out. Like we had that once yeah. where we fired the whole stable staff was gone overnight, but we had our lady down the road that came in with her kids and they were in the program. Nobody but they, they were on call for us all the time. But those key program areas, having somebody like that helps out a lot. So I had a situation um, where I had a staff person who was, started it was, I'm sure you've all been there where other people have told you, oh, do you know so-and-so's whatever, and that he was smoking synthetic marijuana and of course that doesn't show up in the drug test it's like the you know over the counter drug test they do <laughs> and I was really at a loss because there was also that misconception out there that it is legal you know so that he wasn't doing anything wrong but that you know I'm from Arizona and that it is in fact legal mm -hmm. um, and so I really was really at a loss and the best thing I could come up with was because he denied it and then the people who told me then denied it as well. So I had little evidence at that point. Um, and the best thing I came up with was, I, I will be president all of your programs. And the second I see you are impaired, you know, then we'll take steps from there. But I was really at a loss of what to do in terms of that. Has anyone ever dealt with that? So we had a similar, where we had, you know, three counselors who we suspected. But again, like, again, you know, not going to fire just because of, you know, suspicions, you know, unfounded. Um, and we're going to do the similar as far as we're, so we're, I remember being we're in the boardroom talking about it and, you know, came up with this whenever they come back from their day off, they're going to, you know, we're going to, you know, have, you know, more conversations and specifically look and keep tabs on it. And uh, then the phone rang and those three people were arrested for having marijuana. And so kind of the situation worked itself out, interestingly. <laughs> It was, really, it was real strange. Sure. I mean, again, I, and that's, again, like, you need actual evidence. You know, you can't, you know, just because he said, she said this and that. As far as n just not hiring former campers? Essentially, but also, like, how, yeah, kind of. Yeah, so I guess in two ways, I mean, so definitely for whatever CIT, LIT, whatever program you're running, uh, making sure that it is, that they know up front that this is not a guarantee. Completing the program, and we tell you, that completing the program gives you the right to apply earlier than someone who would have needed to go to college for a year. So you have the right to apply, but that's all it is. And so there's no expectation. Uh, I like the fact that we don't call our program a counselor and training program so that there's no expectation that you will be a counselor. You know, I mean, yeah, ideally, you should be able to become one, and I'm glad that we, we have the program. Um, but definitely, it's the right to apply. And then as far as if they're still paying to come to your camp to be a kind of a, in a CIT role, you know, you need to start evaluating, you know, clearly during the summer so that they are getting that feedback. Um, 
And is it, I mean, is it still an application? I mean, yes. as far as, and there's nothing wrong with that, telling kids to take a summer off either. And that's how we'll, that's the approach that we'll take with a lot of our people who finish our high school program, but, that, but we know we're not gonna hire, you know, is take a year off, go to college, you know, or go do whatever, you know, be, spend a year outside of high school and then come back and let's see, you know, the, the amount of growth that, that can happen in that year is so huge that you kind of can't underestimate it. Cody, that's something. Well, with our program, our 16 year olds um, do the, our leadership program and we don't call it a, in training, we just call it the lead, camp leadership program. And then at 17, they come and volunteer for us. They get evaluated as a 16 year old on how the performance was in interacting and, and being a part and being a servant. And then 17, they come back and they have to volunteer because they're not. And it, we don't put our kids in cabins until they're 18. And so at 17, they're coming back to volunteer this summer because we have so many of those kids that are all on a two-week program. And then they get evaluated again. And before they leave camp, before they can even apply, we tell them you're eligible or you're not eligible. And and we make them. We're we're already telling them before they leave if they can. And we to, you need to go to college. You need to have one year on your own and see how you deal with your own before we even allow that. But then they, as a senior in high school, they can apply to be a junior counselor. And they don't, we don't guarantee that spot for them anyway, but we also do tell them, hey, you can or can't come back, so. Do you want to hire them or do you not want to hire them? Yeah. Did you, do you want to hire these people or do you not want to hire them? Um, a lot of times it's girls, I mean, we, so we have a stand program where they're still paying to be covered after their sophomore year. similar where we were having like especially like the high school girls for some reason they're on top of it instead of the boys and we actually were hiring them for like four weeks at a time the, the next <laughs> room, we that down to one or two sessions, just so we could have more of them which helps us to see their performance and we kind of decided that also setting a standard of like one or two weeks is way better than having them hang out with college students for four weeks anyway yeah. um, so that worked out really well of this way they can, because they're still in high school, they still have all of these commitments. And then beyond that, it made it a lot easier to be like, our schedule and your schedule doesn't mesh, unfortunately. And it's not that we don't love you or even have a position for you, it's that the schedule doesn't match to that. So. Yeah. Another good thing, I mean, if you, again, if, if it works for your schedule and if it works for everything else, um, you know, we always encourage our graduates of our high school program to work a different term than they came to camp. Again, doesn't always work and doesn't always, but you know, it's definitely something that we talk about. If you can do that, it's a great idea because, you know, obviously camp is different, you know, if you're here at a different time during the summer. A um, couple things just kind of across the board, you know, to take away. Um, tough conversations, whether they are firings, whether they are improvement kind of conversations, the more prepared you are, the easier the conversation goes, the more time and investment you've put into the relationship with that counselor, the easier and the better that conversation goes. But in general, the conversation will never be as bad as you think it's going to be. And it will always be better after it's over. So it, it's one of those things that's sometimes the only, that, sometimes that's the only bright side is that at least this conversation will be done. And, and that's good, you know, and that's, and that's exactly, like a Band-Aid, just right off. Um, so, you know, th and I think the other thing is, have the difficult conversation. Things are not going to improve on their own. You know, that counselor who is, you know, either yelling or isn't instructing the way that you want, they're not going to magically go on their own, you know what, I should do this better. I should, you know what, I should really look at the way I'm, no, they're not going to do that. They're not going to change, you know, the, uh, what was it, the definition of insanity is doing what you've always done and expecting a different result. You know, <laughs> not telling them is only going to continue the action that's going on. So have the conversation. Um, 
you know, encourage your counselors to have those difficult conversations? Because again, what's crazy, you're, all of this, as you get older, the only difference is that the, your campers get older you know, as you move up in positions. As a counselor, your campers are little. As an age division, your campers are basically the counselors. As a director, your campers, the people that you need to take care of the most, are those, your senior leadership staff. And so your kids just get bigger you know, as you take on more and more roles. Um, and so all of the things that, you know, the fundamentals are still there. You're modeling the behavior you t use with them. Isn't that different than what you would use if they were eight? You know, they just are a little bit you know, smarter. And sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're pretty much the same. But in, hopefully they, you know, they're a little bit smarter. Um, a lot of times whenever we're, other things kind of just to, to take away, you know, utilize other people who are in here. I mean, just the amount of information. Thank you so much for, for sharing that information. Um, have, take advantage of the conference to get two or three people's business cards or something so that you have someone to reach out to during the summer if you need a question about something and everyone at your camp is so invested in what's going on that sometimes you need someone who's outside of the situation to ask for help. Um, and that's what, you know, the beauty of these conferences that you get to meet people who you can lean on in times like that. So that this is going on, I need to, sometimes it's just, I need to talk to someone who's not dealing with the drama that I'm dealing with right now. Sometimes it's, I need to hear about their drama so I can tell myself that things aren't as bad. You know, whatever it is, the utilization of other people is really what kind of allows the camp association to be as incredible as it is. So kind of lean on one another. Um, one of the things that I always enjoyed during sessions, it was especially kind of if it's someone who is, uh, you know, wanting to go to your camp and train. Uh, they always end their session, you know, with like a picture of their child holding a sign that says, hire my dad or hire my mom. And I don't have children, so I can't, uh, I, I can't do that cute moment, but I want the feeling. And so uh, these are two pictures of my cats. <laughs> I, want that, I want that moment, you know? Um, but this is my email address, and I guess the very last thing that we're gonna do um, is the, just the fact that you can fire people and they can learn from it. You can fire people and it, is, it can be one of the best things for them. Um, right before, the day before doing this presentation at another conference, I'll come back to the cats because I know you want to see them. But the day before I got this email from someone that we fired and it was ridiculous and it, it's, it, it's now to the point that I can read it all the way through without having to stop and kind of, you know, kind of take a, a breath. Um, you know, but I've been meaning to write this letter for a while. I'm not sure where to begin. I'm sorry about last summer. I probably should never have worked at your camp. I was young and inexperienced, so you had every right to drop me as I didn't live up to the expectations I should have. I'm still thankful for the experience. In the short time, I learned a lot, and I've been able to take some of those skills with me to current projects. Had an unexpected yet happy run-in with a camper from camp who recognized me last weekend. I was, um, I was told that I needed to find the right place where I could fit, and I think I found that place. Uh, but I just wanted to write you this letter because I'm sorry for last summer. I'm thankful that you gave me the opportunity to work there and improve my skills as a person. Um, this counselor did. They found another camp to go work at. They did a great job there. They're working there again this summer. We're still in touch with this person. I still don't know if I would hire them if they reapplied to work at our own camp. But it's, you are helping, you know, no matter what, you know, you're loving these counselors and you're giving them an opportunity to grow. And sometimes they have to grow through, through being fired. Um, and so, you know, thank you so much for, for being here today. Thank you for being willing to fire people. Um, you know, it's the only way that, that your camp is going to move forward if, as long as you're willing to, uh, to take something like that. If you have any questions or something, come up and talk to me afterwards. There's a bago tournament tonight that you should go to. Um...